Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. This is episode number 34 of my Topaz Studio 2 Creative Toolbox. It's going to be a fun little episode today. Now, I'm going to give you two textures that you can download. I'm going to show you how to load those textures into Topaz Studio 2. So I think this will be really good for you if you've never loaded a texture into Topaz Studio 2. We're going to make this image right here. It's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, let's get started. I started out in Photoshop and brought the stock image right into Topaz Studio. But you could easily, just as easily, have started out in Topaz Studio, too. Now, here's what the original image looks like, and here's what I turned it into. I really love this image working with textures to get really cool artistic effects. Let me go ahead and shut off all these filters here. I use three texture filters and a basic adjustment. Let me shut them all off. Now, two of these filters, or two of these, not filters, but two of these textures, you're going to be able to download these textures from, from a stock agency, unsplash.com, and I'll show you how to install them into Topaz Studio 2. So if you've never done that before, taking your own texture and put it into Topaz Studio 2, you're going to learn how to do that today. But anyway, here's the first texture, and this is one you're going to download and put into Topaz Studio. And then here's another texture layer that I added, and this is another one you're going to be able to download and install it into Topaz Studio. And then the next texture is a border texture, which comes as a part of Topaz Studio too. And lastly, I just added a basic adjustment just to lighten up the center of the flower a little bit. I'll go ahead and delete all these filters, and then we'll start from scratch. I remove the filters and that's always a little scary feeling for me because now I got to start from scratch and hopefully I'll be able to do it, but I got to have confidence in myself, right? All right, here we go. So the first thing we're going to do is add a filter and it's going to be a texture filter. The first texture we're going to add is a texture that is not a part of Topaz Studio. So we're going to have to download a texture from unsplash.com. It's a free stock agency. I'm going to show you that here in a second. We're going to download it, but then you're going to go ahead and install it into Topaz Studio 2, and I'll show you exactly how to do that. I get a lot of the images that I'm working with in my tutorials, so you can follow along with me from Unsplash.com. I have some other companies that I, you know, free stock agencies that I work with too, like Pixabay, Paxels, and DeviantArt, just to name a few. But anyway, Unsplash is a good one, and you can come in here and, for instance, textures, you can come to the search field and type and you can see I've already searched here, like painterly texture. And look, you got a bunch of textures in here. So there's a lot of free textures out there for us to get. And I come here quite a lot to get textures and different things. So, but this is where I got the texture today. In fact, let's see, where was the one? This is one of the textures we're going to use today. And the other texture will be found in the uh, description below this video. But to download a texture, let me show you. In fact, as I said, this is one we're going to use. This is the second texture we use. Click on it, and you're going to see the image come up on your screen. And then all you have to do is download it. You can just click download. It'll download the image. But you also have this drop down here. If you click on here, you have some different choices. You can pick a small, medium, large, or the original size, okay? So whichever you prefer. A lot of times I'll take a large or a medium. It doesn't matter that much on texture. So... I would just probably do a large here. Click large and it will download it. And once it downloads, we'll have to install it into Topaz Studio 2. And that is next. Now let's say you've downloaded your two free textures and now you want to install them in Topaz Studio 2. Now we are in the texture filter. Make sure you have the texture filter open. Come to here where it says texture manager. Click this where it says open. And this dialog box will open up. And all you need to do is come down here. You can add a category. And I recommend that you do that so you know where to find your texture. Let's add a category. And I'm going to call this painterly backgrounds. So every time I get a painterly background, I'm going to put it in here. Okay, so whatever you want to name it, that's totally up to you. But I'm going to call mine painterly background. I'm going to click OK. OK. And next, I have to import the texture. So come here where it says import texture. Click on this. Your computer or file browser will open up and just point it to where your downloads are. In my case, they're right in here. I'm just going to tell mine to go by date added. And here are my two textures. And I downloaded that one twice because I was showing you how to download. So I want this texture and I want this texture here. So I'm going to select these two textures, click open, and check it out. It says copy and textures successfully imported two textures. Click OK. They're right there. 
Now I click close. And now when I come over here to category, right now it says all. And if I come here to the newly created painterly background, there's my two textures. Voila, it's just that simple. And we're going to start out with this texture right here, this pink painterly background. I'm going to click it. And there it is. And now I'm going to show you how I adjust it and make it fit into the image. By the way, if you want to give your textures a name, like right now, this texture is just the name of the file, right? If I come back over to the um, texture manager and open it back up and go into that same uh, painterly background, you know, I could come here and see the little pencil here. I can go ahead here and rename. And also I can delete uh, textures that I don't want anymore. And also if you wanted to, and I forgot to tell you this, if, when you bring your textures in, if you don't want to add a category, you can select any one of these categories and put it into any category that you like. I just wanted to point that out. I'm going to go ahead and click close. This is the default setting. Now the opacity is at uh, 50%. Let's turn it up the full way so you can see what that texture actually looks like. Now I ended up on taking my opacity the whole way up and I changed my blend mode from normal to multiply, which is a really good blend mode. Uh, multiply, actually overlay, soft light, screen can be a good one. Not for this particular image. It really depends on the background and things like that. Soft light, hard light, vivid light can be good. But in this case, we're going to go with multiply. And uh, let me see here. What did I do? I had ended up adjusting the brightness. Now, here's one of the things, and I mentioned this in my last tutorial. I really love this about uh, the texturing filter inside of Topaz Studio 2, and that's all these adjustments here, like the brightness. I needed the lightness image up, so I brought the brightness up to around a 16. And then um, the contrast, I pulled the contrast back. See that it just kind of softens up the image to right around like a minus 28, I think it was, somewhere in that area. And then the detail, I pulled the detail back. So now the detail is cool. Sometimes I pull it to the right and give it more detail. But in this case, I took some detail out. So I pulled it to the left and I pulled it back to like a minus 38, somewhere in that area, if my notes serve me well. And then on the color strength, let's see, what did I do here? I believe I left the saturation where it was, but I added some more pink. I pulled the color strength up to like 61. You see that pink starting to come in there? 61. Now this next slider is very important, this color slider, because this runs you through the different tint ranges. And I left this on, no, I didn't leave it here. I actually drug it to the right. It starts out in the pink area, and as you drag through, it goes through different colors. So this is very effective and very powerful. See how you can change tints and things here? And I ended up taking it the whole way up to one because I thought I thought that looked pretty good with it. And maybe, yeah, I'm going to leave it right where I was because I was happy with it. I'm, you know, already my mind's thinking, what if I would do this? But I'm going to go ahead and stick with my plan here because art is, you know, our, you know, you take a short break and all of a sudden your mind's starting to go in different directions. So you just got to go with what your, what your mind, what your heart is telling you. And, and that's how you create art. It's all about the feelings that you have, how you feel, you know, sometimes your art will be light and happy. Sometimes it'll be more on the darker side and it's just, it's just fun, but just, just go with whatever your, whatever your feeling and your emotion is. And it's kind of, kind of dictate how the art's going to end up turning out. And I hope that makes sense. Now, as I study this image, I don't think I need to pull any of that texture off the flower because it's not hurting it in any way. In fact, if anything, the color over it and everything is all melting together and it's looking really nice. So I'm just going to leave it just the way it is. Now let's add our second texture filter. So we'll go ahead and click add filter, come back down to texture. And we're going to go back to that same category of painterly background or whatever you named yours. Okay. And we're going to use that second texture, this guy right here. Okay. And so that's what that texture looks like. Now let's pull it up the whole way so you can see. It, I think it's like some ocean or something like that, some water. Maybe close up of some water. I don't know. It doesn't really matter, but it's really a cool looking texture. And now let me see what I did with this one. Um, I changed the, this one to the uh, overlay blend mode. Oh, and that looks really cool. And did, what did I do with my opacity? I pulled my opacity back to about a 60 somewhere in there. But isn't that really pretty? So, so far, so good. And I'm just looking at my notes here. I thought it was a little on the darker side, but that's kind of nice. I don't mind that so much. And now we're going to go down to our wonderful controls. 
I'll work with color first. So I'm going to come down to saturation. Now, you, as you recall, this is a blue texture, right? So if I take the saturation up to the right, I'm going to add blue to it. And I don't like that. I'm just going to take that saturation the whole way off. That looks really cool. And I like that. And what else did I do here? I took the detail. See, here's the detail in that uh, texture, right? So I pulled my detail back, got rid of, that's the detail the whole way down. I want some of that detail in there, but not a too much of it. So I'm going to take my detail down to around like a minus 42. And I think I need to lighten it up a little bit. Now, when I adjust this brightness, it's only going to be working with the texture itself that we're working with. So I'm going to lighten it up just a little wee tiny bit, just to add a little bit of life into it. Okay, so right there, I think that's looking really nice. This is a little bit light up here, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make my image smaller, and I'm going to come here to where it says Edit. I'm going to click this right here, and I'm going to transform this texture. And I'm going to make it larger, because what I thought was it was a little light on this side when that texture was in. Let me pull it back in so you can actually see it here. Sorry about that. I should have explained that to you first. I thought it was a little bit light up here, and that's not bad, but I wanted to kind of make it a little more even. So, and as you, if you look at this texture over here, you can see it's light on the right side. You see it right there. So all I'm doing is making the texture bigger. And then you can take this and move it around. And yeah, right there. So now it's it's more even. The background's more even. I like that. And I'm I'm just gonna come here and click edit again. Now, if you want to, you can flip this texture horizontally flip it vertically, whatever you would like. So you can play around with all that stuff. You can even invert it, but I'm happy with it. If it ain't broke, you don't fix it. So I'm just going to leave it like it is. I don't want this tutorial getting too long, but I love it so far. So we've come from here so far and we're looking like this. I'm really happy. We're going to add one more texture and that's a texture that comes with Topaz Studio. Let's go back up. Add filter, one more texture filter, and this one is going to be found under the category, not the category, I'm sorry, under the group of borders, okay? And it's actually the first one right here, it's called Antique Border, so let's click on it. And I thought right out of the gate, I thought, man, that looks really nice. We're going to do some alterations on it, but first let me go ahead and uh, edit it here, uh, or transform it. I'm going to make it not quite as uh, large because I think it's going into the flower too much. It was, you know, going on to the petals of the flower over here a little bit too much. So I'm just oversizing it here, and that's just bringing in the edges of the borders. So you can play with these and get them just right. Again, as I say, I love Topaz Studio 2's texture and filter. I don't think there's anything else out there on the market quite like it, at least not that I know of anyway, and that looks really nice. I like that right there. That's cool. I'm just going to click Edit, and that'll get rid of that uh, Transform dialog. And now let me go ahead and do some adjustments here. Now, what did I do on this? Uh, it's multiplied blend mode. Now, borders automatically give you multiplied blend mode. That's just built into the program here on Topaz Studio. And uh, the opacity, I pulled it up to around like an 85, just to make it a little richer, right? like around an 85. And I brought the brightness up because I thought it was too dark. And I brought the brightness up to like around a 25. And close as I can get it right there, 25, looking good so far. The saturation, again, I took it off. I'm going to take the saturation the whole way to the right. And you can see there's like an orange in there. Okay, so I just took it the whole way off. And we have no saturation on it. It's just picking up the color of the background, which is what I want. And then I altered the, uh, the actual border itself with the color strength. So I took the color strength, took it up to a little over halfway, like around 56. Okay, 56. And then I... Uh, adjusted the color just to try to match the background a little bit better. And I ended up with like around 98, 98 to 100, you know. You're, where I'm really splitting hairs here, but right about there. Now, it might be a little too much color strength, so I might want to just pull that back just a tiny wee bit. Yeah, maybe somewhere, yeah, somewhere right around there, like a 49. I think that looks good. Here's before that texture. Here's after the texture. So I like that border. I think it looks nice. The last thing I want to do is just lighten up the flower here. And I'm going to use a basic adjustment for that. Not the background, but just the flower. 
And lastly, this basic adjustment. But I just want to say this, uh, normally on textures, I'm usually masking out textures on the flowers and, and different parts of whatever type of an image I'm working on. You know, I'll pull it back a little bit. But in this particular image, I don't think it needs pulled back. I really like the effect over the entire flower. So I'm happy with it. So in case you're wondering, why aren't you removing it, Dave? Well, because I don't want to remove it. I think it looks good. Nobody says you always have to remove it. And I think it looks nice. So I'm leaving it just the way it is. Okay, so now I'm going to come up here to add filter. And I'm going to get a basic adjustment. And uh, what I'm going to do is lighten up the exposure. Now, I'm only looking at the flower itself. Okay. And I brought the exposure up to like around a 30, I believe it was. Yeah, 30. And I brought the shadows up a little bit. Opened up the shadows. See that? See how the shadows are starting to open up there? And I opened the shadows up. Not too much, but to like right around 1920, somewhere in there. Let's make it. Let's make it 20, okay? And then the saturation, I thought the saturation was a little bit strong on the flower, so I pulled it back just a little bit to like a minus, like a minus eight, minus 10. I'm gonna go with a minus 10. I think that looks nice. Now I only want it to be darkened, or not darkened, but to be lightened on the flower, but not the background. My background's getting too light, so now I'm gonna use a layer mask. So let's go here and click on this layer mask icon. I'm gonna invert the layer mask. And when I do, it puts a black mask on it, hides the adjustment. Now we're going to use the spot tool to add that effect just to the flower. Let's see here. So we're going to come over, yeah, right on the flower here. We're going to take this transparency and drag it the whole way to the right so it turns white. And you'll notice we have mask area inside or outside. I want the mask on the inside, so it's only going to lighten the flower. But I'm going to take this edge where... And if you look at that mask, can you see how it's grabbing the edges of the flower? This is really cool technology inside of... Uh, um, studio, Topaz Studio too. I'm going to take this edge wear and drag it the whole way up to the right. It's going to lock hard on the edges of the flower. This little soft uh, glow around here is going to be fine. It's going to blend in nicely. I'm going to leave it round just the way it is. Now we can come here and we can alter the size here, you know, but I, I, I mainly want to stay on that flower in the center. It's going to be like right there. Now you can alter that spot any way you want. Just pull in these little handles here, these little squares, and you can change the shape and do all the different things. You can move it around, but look how it's locking on that uh, flower really well. I'm gonna go ahead and click apply. And now let's go back to the basic adjustment and let's take a look. Uh, let me shut this off. Here's the before and here's the after, but see how it's just lightening up the center of the flower. Now, if I need to make any more adjustments here, I can just come here and, you know, if I thought it needed to be lightened up a little more, I could take that exposure and bring it up a little bit more, but just like that. So. Here it is again. Here's before the basic adjustment. Here's after the basic adjustment. Here's my overall before and after. And once you're happy with it, if you started out in Topaz Studio, just come up to File and Save Project. Give it a name and save your project. And for me, I started out in Photoshop. So what I need to do is click Accept, and that'll send me right back into Photoshop. Here's a little tip for you when you're in Photoshop. If you type the shortcut F key on your keyboard twice, You'll go to a full screen, you know, without your panels and things on there. And you can really examine your image and see if you like it. But I'm so happy with this. A little bit of texturing and we have ourselves a piece of art. And in case you're wondering how to get back to your regular Photoshop view, just type your F key again and you'll be right back. But there it is. Texturing, creating photo art, all with the help of Topaz Studio 2 your and my creative toolbox. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a like, share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell notification icon. Every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about